We were off last week, and uh, I'm not exactly sure how to do this tonal shift right now, but I, I do want to take a second to start off tonight by trying to catch up on the terrible events that happened over the last 10 days. And offer my thoughts and prayers to the people of Colorado Springs and San Bernardino in the wake of these tragic terrorist attacks. Of course, these days, even thoughts and prayers have become controversial. Just look at this cover of the New York Daily News from last week. It says, God isn't fixing this. And for once, uh, they're not referring to the newspaper industry. <laughs> no, they're going after politicians who, following attacks like these, offer what the paper here calls meaningless platitudes. Now, first, I'd just like to defend thoughts and prayers as someone who occasionally thinks and prays. The reason you keep people in your thoughts and prayers is admittedly not to fix the problem, but to try to find some small way to share the burden of grief. But the Daily News is right that if we really want to fix it, we can't stop there. So what do we do? Well, last night during his speech in the Oval Office, behind a podium, in front of a desk, the president <laughs> declared that the San Bernardino shooting was an act of terrorism. And it does matter what the motivation is, because when we decide it's an act of terrorism, we do something about it. Sometimes too much about it. The next thing you know, the NSA is reading your Netflix queue and what would have been your social security safety net is being shipped in pallets of $100 bills to Baghdad. But when it's not a terrorist attack, we do nothing. Why can't there be anything in between? There has to be some way to make it harder to build up an arsenal. The San Bernardino shooters had 6,000 rounds of ammunition. Why is it so easy to buy bullets when I have to show three forms of ID to buy Sudafed? Of course, the people say... <laughs> Some people say if you outlaw guns, only outlaws will have guns. But then at least you'll know who the outlaws are. They're the ones with the guns. Go get them. <laughs> also, and I should have mentioned this before, I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Maybe everyone should have a gun. If everyone had a lot of training, it might be a deterrent. We'd have a safe civil society that might not turn into a three-million-man Mexican standoff. 